Well, praise the Lord, everybody, and greetings, sisters, and this blessed Monday to you all. Welcome to This Is My Story, a weekly segment where we share stories of women's journey in life, and a monthly segment titled Her Perspective, a candid conversation with panelists on various social topics. Our theme this month is Divine Path to Purpose, and tonight our guest is Pastor Angela Parker, founder of Partners in Prayer International Ministries, a church without walls. And after she shares, we will open the floor for dialogue. At this time, we have prayer by Sister Ruby Brown. Amen. Lord, we come to you now thanking you for this great opportunity to share with Sister Catherine Morrison Ministries. Oh God, we ask you in the name of Jesus that you will anoint Pastor Parker, that you will feed her the wisdom and knowledge from on high, oh God, that she can minister to your people. We just praise you for this opportunity and we give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for that wonderful prayer. At this time, we'll read our scripture. Our scripture is coming from Mark, the 11th chapter, verse 24. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when you pray, believe that you receive them, and ye shall have them. And we thank the Lord because his word is already blessed. At this time, we're going to have a musical selection by Chicago Mass Choir. Prayer will fix it every time. Can I get a witness in the house that prayer Amen. will fix it? They Amen. Will, he will fix it Amen. every Amen. time. All we have to do is Amen. believe, and he will actually do it for us. Yes. God's going to be in the city of USA. I want y'all to welcome. Put your hands together as we give some shouted praise tonight to Chicago Man's Choir. Every time, yes. 
say yes, we will fix it every time. Prayer will fix it every time. Can we shout prayer will fix it? Prayer will fix it. Prayer will fix it every time. Amen. Yes. So such a, a privilege and honor to be able to go before the Lord in prayer. We can go boldly before the Lord in prayer and make our requests known. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to introduce this awesome guest of ours, Pastor Angela Parker. She is an awesome, powerful woman of God. And she's the founder of Partners in Prayer International Ministries, a church without walls. It's a healing and deliverance ministry with an emphasis on intercessory prayer. And she's on the staff of the Pentecostal Assemblies of the World Convention Evangelism Outreach Department. And she has served in this capacity for many years. And she has a monthly 24-hour prayer call, the first Thursday of the month, which is powerful. And it includes many intercessors from all over the world. I'm talking about bishops, evangelists, and pastors, all types of people that will come on to lead this prayer. And she also has services throughout the week. Amen. Yeah. She has yeah. services. So she's a full functioning church without walls. And she'll talk about that in a little while. So at this time, we're going to go ahead and give way for Pastor Park as she shares her story and her journey to start in her ministry and uh, just whatever else she feels led to share at this time. If, uh, Pastor Parker. Praise the Lord, everybody. I just thank and praise the Lord and give honor to God who's the head of my life. And I give honor and reverence to Evangelist Catherine Morrison for I thank you so much for the invite and her ministry and everyone that is a part of their ministry. I just say praise the Lord to you all in the name of Jesus. I say praise the Lord to all the partners in prayer global ministry. I see so many of you on, uh, I see so many of you on tonight, and I thank you, and I thank you for coming at the last minute. I thank the Lord for our Sister Demina uh, Cox, who got the word out, and Sister Emma, Evangelist Emma Hall, and they were getting it out, and 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 Minister uh, Gigi Jeffers, all of you, uh, Minister uh, uh, Etta May. I just thank the Lord for all of you all helping us to get the word out today, and I'm just grateful, grateful, grateful for this. I didn't look for this. I try to tell people that are in ministry that if God calls you, he knows what he's calling you to. And if he's calling you to minister, you don't have to worry about what you're going to do and how you're going to do it and all of that. Because if he called you to it, he's going to bring you through. He's the one that's in charge of your life. So just, just sit back and just just follow Jesus. And a lot of times, we, if we find it hard to do that, some people really, really, really want to be in ministry because they have the wrong concept of what ministry is. They think ministry is wearing the little suits and with the little white collars and sitting up in the best seats and being up front and all of that. But that's not that that's not that's not ministry. That that's flobo. Uh, but ministry is working. Ministry is being out there in the trenches. Ministry is being up half the night when people calling you on the phone. You got to go help somebody or you out all day long doing things. And then when you think you're getting ready to go home, then something else comes up. Ministry is work. So we need to change this concept because of the things maybe that we see on television and everything. That's not what it is. And those that know better. Uh, uh, that that know that ministry is work and ministry is is something that just it just it's just it's deep. I couldn't even conceive it, and I ran from it. I just knew the Lord was not calling anybody like me. And uh, I was working at Blue Cross and Blue Shield, enjoying myself. I asked God for a job where I could help people, uh, and and, and get paid for doing it on my job. And he gave me just that job. I was a community relations specialist for 15 years. And before that, I was a communications uh, coordinator. Uh, so I had, then I was administrative secretary, you name it. He let me get all of these skills. And especially when it came to the speaking, I, went, I joined Toastmasters. And then I was amazed that table topics, I had just started. And every time they did a table topic, I was jumping up, responding. And it unnerved me because I had just got there. What, what was I doing? And they would say, oh, that's good, that's good. And I just kept doing it. Oh, that's good, Angie, you good. 
And I was very upset. I didn't come there to be in the forefront. I came so that I could learn. And so what he was trying to tell me is that he called me to speak, but I didn't want to be a speaker. I wanted to be a singer. So uh, to make a long story short, in that area, uh, the next thing I knew, um, I was up at the Bible college where I did not want to go. And I was mad because I didn't want to be in, in, in there learning the Bible. I read the Bible on my own almost every day. Uh -huh. And I didn't want to be. So all my friends would laugh and they said, yeah, look, look, they come in, Angie, because they knew I didn't want it. And so I started uh, going to Bible college in 1995. Then uh, evangelist, y'all yeah, know what Dr. Rachel Webb, she put me and she started matching the ministers with part. And she said, y'all need somebody to pray for with you. So this oh, semester, I'm going to match you up. Okay. And, okay. And um, when she did that, she matched me up with this uh, minister, Pat White. And me and Pat White, we prayed every night and every uh, uh, morning. We, we got up early in the morning, and I wasn't a morning person, so I surely didn't like that. So we were up six thirty. She needed to be she needed to be up uh, earlier than that. Uh, and then this other lady uh, started praying with us, and she wanted to be up at five thirty. And I loved to had a fit. So anyway, she was up, and we were laughing because she would just be snoring on the phone. She wouldn't even be awake. And I was upset. I said, Lord, she's getting me up at 5.30 in the morning. She's snowing every morning. So anyway, as it went on, we got to praying and praying and praying. And I was very serious about praying. Anytime somebody's head was hurting or, or anything, I had all in my purse for myself because I had road rage. And I said, Lord, I'm, I'm going to get some special oil and I'm going to anoint myself with oil when I start getting crazy because of the people. So I did and started praying for myself. Next thing I know, anybody I walked up to and they said their head was hurting or they had any kind of condition, before I knew it, I had my all out anointing them and praying for them in Jesus' name. And God was healing these people. So I went on, and the next thing I knew, I had a prayer group. He was he started sending me out. So I'd go places and preach and, and talk to the people. They all wanted to talk to me. And then I was sent, ooh. They'd be upset. I'm leaving my church. I didn't need this and this. I said, no, I'll tell you what you do. Let's get up and pray. I said, what time you want to pray? And they were in shock. I was too. I was like, Lord, I'm going to tell people I'm going to pray with them. What's going on? So I did. This kept happening till I had a friend of mine make me a prayer schedule. I had a, I said, start me off from uh, five o'clock on to seven, half hour in, interview, interviews. So, um, when I would go out and everything and people want to pray, I say, okay, fill out this form and say whether you want to pray 5, 5, 30, 6, 6, 30. And I stopped at 7, so I get ready for work. So I had these little prayer groups, and I was praying with this one. That Vance is Ruby Brown. She came. Uh, I started doing this, I believe, in 1995, but I started doing it on a regular basis around 1998. Yeah, around 1998 and 99. Uh, so uh, Evangelist Ruby Brown, I met her because she started working on the team with us. And next thing you know, I had her on there with us. And she's still here. And that was like 2000, 2001. And she's still here today. <laughs> and so we started and started praying with people and praying with people. And by me going all these places and doing PIP and the convention, and I was meeting a lot of people. So people started coming on the line. And so I thought that would be that. That was 1995, 98. I started doing on the regular. Now, in 1998, God told a friend of mine to call me and tell me to name the ministry Partners in Prayer. Uh, Partners in Prayer. And so he said, if you don't take that name, I'm going down there and get it. The next day, I was downtown getting that name. And so I had the Partners in Prayer. So about 2010, so many things were going on in between that. But in 2010, he said uh, he wanted Partners in Prayer on Sundays. And I said, oh, Lord. Partner prayer on Sundays? Okay, so I just started doing it on Sundays, you know, before we went to church. And uh, I started doing it and, you know, trying to get everything together. Um, 20, uh, 2013, uh, this was about 2012 when he told me he wanted it on Sundays. 2013, he said, I said, I want partners in prayer. See, when God tells you to do something, sometimes you don't get it. He's kind. When he told me, I said, I want partners to be on Sundays. I knew that meant he wanted church. 
And I was like, oh my God. I started setting that up, got that Sunday school started because we was already on the line every day. Um, so I set that up and, and got Sunday school started and, and everything, Bible class, everything. We, we got all these things started and there I was. But in 2002, I got to back it up. I just ended up leaving my job, my wonderful, good paying job. Thought I was going to be a traveling evangelist. Thought I was getting ready to hit the trenches. Because I said, oh, I like this. This is this is nice. And I said, and they pay good. <laughs> you know, uh -huh. he just let me get my little feet wet a little bit. He tricked me, really did. And so when I left that job, I did not get a call. I was here in the house on the telephone with 15 people. And I said, Lord, when am I going to get the engagement? And he told me I was in high gear right now. You in high gear. How can I be in high gear? I don't have no money. Everything's gone. I can't even afford to pay my house No, I was crying and everything going on. And then after two and a half years, he said, why are you crying? You've been in this house two and a half years and haven't paid the house No, Hadn't been set out on the street. You know, they'll sit you out after three months. Mm -hmm. But then a, a prophet friend of mine called me and said, Angie, pack up your stuff. You're going to have to uh, you're going to have to give up your house. And I was like, I don't want to. But I had to give up my house. I had to go and move in with my little goddaughter and her little baby and her husband for four years. I thought I was going in there for a couple of weeks because I got a little job. But that job didn't pay me nine dollars and something out. And I was used to high road. <laughs> Thirty three dollars an hour to nine dollars. Come on, somebody. You know, God got jokes, y'all. Come on. And, and and during that period of time, that seven-year period, I went through so much hurt, so much pain, so much disappointment, so much sickness. I worked at Blue Cross and Blue Shield, and when I left there, I didn't have no insurance. I didn't have nothing. People were trying to help me. I couldn't buy medicine for myself. I had staff four times working with my goddaughter in this daycare that I didn't want to work in. I had four little jobs and was still making no money. And I was still doing the ministry. Come on now. We got the wrong concept of what ministry is all about. When he calls you, he calls you into himself. And then he got to break you and make you. He got to make you where we can be like him. He walked, what did he do? He walked around oh, in, in his shoes and sandals. Come on now. I invited one friend of mine to church and she didn't want to go to the church where I had told her to come where I was at at the time. And she said, that's too far, Lord. And he talked, said back to her, he spoke right back to her and said, I walked everywhere I went. Don't tell me about nothing too far and you driving in the car. She's still at that church to this day. And that's been by over 20 years. I thank the Lord um, for everything that he is to me because it was very, very hard. It was not easy, but I did not give up those seven years when it was so painful. And everybody like you when you when you miss Blue Cross or when you, you know, you doing things and you moving and you shaking. But then when you when I noticed that when I started praying, I lost all my friends. When I started getting up early in the morning and praying, nobody wanted to go out to dinner with me no more. They didn't they didn't include me anymore. And then he moved me out in the county. In this little Wedgewood out in Florida, Missouri, nobody came over my house after my little shower they gave me. I didn't see anybody anymore. It was the Lord. Know this, you can't take anybody with you. You get the call of God, and he called his different calls aren't calls aren't the same, y'all. He got the little call like this, and he got it like this, and then he got them brave. And it's not numbers, baby. It's anointing. It's the anointing, the anointing that he puts on your life for the work that you have to do. And you can't compare that with anyone. Well, let me look and see what she's doing over here. Let me see what he done. Uh-uh, uh-uh. He broke me up from that years ago. I didn't follow anybody but Jesus. My pastor, Bishop James A. Johnson, the late great Bishop Johnson, he said, when God tells you to do something, do it and do it right then. And he didn't know later he was going to see when God called me to do all this. I did it and I did it right when God told me to. So you have a work that you're doing. I started on the phone with one person. Then I went and it was three of us. Next thing you know, 
I had another group of older ladies, about three or four of them, five o'clock in the morning. Then I left them and went with the one that I started with uh, for a half an hour, 20 minutes. Then the next thing I know, I was with some little teenagers. I had four or five of them. I was working with them. And then the next thing you know, I was working with some people in St. Charles and some people in Des Moines and then Evangelist Ruby Brown and the people that when I left my job, I was doing all of this printing in the morning, starting at five o'clock and going to work every morning. And I was like, God, why couldn't that be good enough for you? I was doing what I was doing with my job. Why, why I have to lose my job? You know, you're thinking all this stuff because you got to learn how to suffer. You got to learn how to suffer. See, we got a lot of people that's called or out there doing something. I'm talking about the anointed that breaks the yoke. He said, I'm calling you to a healing and deliverance ministry, baby. I'm calling you to cast out demons. I'm calling you to work. That's why I love Evangelist Boyne. When I first saw Evangelist Boyne up there, and I believe he was in Oklahoma, and she was touching those people, and they was getting the Holy Ghost like that. And I was working in the receiving room and, and working so hard that I couldn't talk money. And, and, and she was just touching them. And I was like, wait a minute, something wrong up in here. So I, I went up there, down there where she was and touched her. I said, I want this, Lord, what she got. I'm going to tell you, he gave it to me, too. And I was walking around with it for years and didn't even know I had. Come on, somebody. Not looking for things, just trying to be a servant of God. Mm -hmm. And I told the members until this lady called me, hey, Sister Holy Ghost. And I was wondering what she was talking about. She said, well, everybody you touch, they get the Holy Ghost. I didn't know that. Come on, I'm talking about, I'm talking about working. I'm talking about working uh, when, when, when you're doing a work for the Lord and, and you're not paying, you're not paying any, I'm sorry about that. You're not paying any attention to anything but the work. That's all you paying. It. So I wasn't paying any attention to that. I knew people got healed here and there. My pastor even asked me that I had the gift of healing and laying on hands. And I told him, oh, I got you. I got you. But I really wasn't paying attention to what was going on. But nevertheless, he was doing his work, y'all. He was doing that work. Come on. I got to. I'm sorry, I can't talk right now. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm on a live program. Thank you. Bye-bye. Oh, Value City. <laughs> oh my goodness. Lord have mercy. So uh when when you're trying to do something, see, she just just messed with my thought. That's why I didn't want to uh answer that at all. Uh, but when I was doing all of these things and I wasn't paying attention, it was 20, 2018, and I said, Oh, was, we were at the uh, convention and I was on one end and they were on the other end, and I was just touching people and they just started speaking in tongues. I said, Oh my God. You know, because then I thought what the lady was talking about. Ooh, <laughs> and we got COVID. But I'm telling you, it, it, it was such a wonderful thing. And now I'm asking him, come on, somebody. I'm asking, I said, well, Lord, if they just born, they getting the Holy Ghost on the telephone with her, it's about six, 700 people. I said, they can come on the line and get the Holy Ghost. So I'm going to do an altar workers' time of, a session on Saturday, I said, when I come back, I, Lord, I've got to start uh, having people come on the phone so they can get this Holy Ghost, because if you want it, see, that's what I'm talking about. He gave me this little insight where I could see people that want the Holy Ghost, you touch them, you got that laying on the hands, and you put your hand on them, and all of a sudden, they start speaking in tongues. But that's the ones that want it. Not the one that's playing and shucking and jack. I, I, I don't waste time to get hoarse anymore with people. You want the Holy Ghost? Come on, come on. Open up your mouth. Come on. Let's 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 praise him. Let's worship him. And breaking that down. And those people start speaking because they want it. Come on now. And you know, so this this thing was something with me in this ministry. How I started with prayer, and I've been praying since I was four years old. Because I started praying with my uncle, and he was praying that now lay me down to sleep. I said, uh uh uh. I said, Uncle Matt, I don't want that baby prayer. I want the grown up prayer. Didn't know what I was doing. He said, the grown-up prayer. I said, I want that our father prayer. You know, that I heard the others. Do. He told me that our father prayer. I took that our father prayer and put anything I wanted with it that I wanted to pray for people. And that's what I did. 
you know, you pay attention to your life. I was going back, back on all the times when I was a little girl prophesying and telling my grandma this is going to happen and that was going to happen. I didn't know all that stuff, but it was coming out of my mouth. I told her, quit running down there, taking care of grandma. I said, make her come up here. I said, because you think you're going to bury her and get all her land. And I was a little girl. I said, she going to bury you. And that's what happened. Come on, somebody. I want to say the same side field with the Holy Ghost. A gift is a gift and gifts come without repentance. But are you following your gift? He started me out praying with all of these people. Named the name the partners in prayer. I'm sitting up in 2010, just Facebooking and trying to get the whole concept. And I was creating um what we call it, what we call it now. We have our sites. So I created Partners in Prayer International. And I had put all these people in there. And God said, This is a global ministry. All right. And I, I fell over like this and had to hold on because I almost fell out of my seat. I said, a whole, I don't even see international. I was just, you know. So I did what he said. I named the Partners in Prayer Global Ministries. And when we got out there, I got out there on Facebook because Dr. Sheila Austin told me I need to be out there. Went to Birmingham to work with Bishop Austin because he just said, I got some I want you to do for me. And there I was, got me up like with Clifton Jones early in the morning praying for people and doing a prayer clinic. I was like, what the world? And the Lord blessed us so up there in uh, Birmingham. And at the end, Dr. Sheila said, come on, we're going to put you in a circle. We're going to pray for you. She said, because you need to be all over the world. You need to be on the World Wide Web. And I about fell. I said, Lord, I don't need to be on no, I don't want no. And, but I was just smiling. Yes, ma'am. And they prayed for me. And I came back in two months. I was out there on Facebook. Next thing you know, I was out there four days. I was out there doing healing and deliverance. What else was I doing? A uh, women, woman to woman. I, I was I, I was doing a real talk. I was out there, baby. Then next thing you know, he said, walking through the bike. I was down praying. And I said, Oh Lord, no, I'm not a theologian. He was like, You gonna walk through that bike? I was out there on Facebook. Picking Genesis, we started in Genesis. I had the prayer partners, po partners in prayer. Everything I do, they do too. I take them right with me. Uh, we're going out there and we're going to read the Bible. We're going to walk through it and break it down in simplicity. That's what I call it. Walking through the Bible in simplicity. In its simplest form. And people loved it. You don't know what God has, what's in you that he wants you to do. You don't see it. I ain't see that. I wanted to be a singer. And when this saint told me, Angie, God loves you and know you love him. But he says singing ain't your gift. I was so mad I didn't know what to do. I had a voice let a teacher coming to my house once a week. I had a piano. Uh, man, I was playing for piano lessons. I was serious. I thought I was going to be a singer and, and, and learn how to play the piano. So if I had to play for myself, I could. And he just bust my little bubble. No, I want you to use your vocal cords for something else. So you might have a something else. Is you over here trying to do this because that's what you like. I love singing. Uh-huh. But that wasn't what he had to do. I don't know what I loved it for. Nobody would let me sing. Come on now. <laughs> Frustrated me to death. But that God was in that. You yes. think that people, a lot of people think that when they're going through and nobody like me, everybody mistreated. I'm trying that, to mute myself. That's, that's set up. Trying to, somebody's trying to mute themselves. Just, a, a so just hit your mute button on your phone, dear. Uh, they think that, oh, people don't like me. It's not the people don't like you. That's God. He didn't say, did they like him? That's what you always say. You got to stop when you're going through. You got to stop and, and hit the bike. Now, they mistreated Jesus. They treated him like a dog. They killed him up and, and they nailed him to a cross. What makes us think, and we call them, we his disciples, that they're not going to nail us too. You better get them nails out, just pass it to them, say, here I am. Mm -hmm. Because when you are God's call, you are going to go through Everybody is not going to like you. Everybody's not going to do that. So I was pushed. You say push for his purpose, baby. I was pushed and I wanted to fight, but I knew better. See, I, I didn't play with God. I didn't play with God when I was in the world. So I knew I wasn't going to play with him when I got saved. So what did he do? He just kept pushing from one level to another, to another, 
to another. And before I knew it, we had the church with our wall. Before I knew it, there I was teaching. And I wasn't trying to teach the Bible. I was trying to teach people how to live by. I was trying to get Joyce Myers, Battlefield of the Mind. I had total forgiveness. I had uh, the hour of prayer to change the world. Had people reading the books so they could learn how to pray. I had all kinds of books. I got some of them right back here stacked up uh, back here that I used to help uh, people. So all I was trying to do was help people to be better, to live better, to live the life that they wanted. But God was like, no, nah, you should teach my word. Now, you've been in it ever since you got saved. You just, Bible after Bible after Bible, I'd jump up and buy me a Bible before I would buy a pair of shoes. And, and I love shoes, I'm telling you. But I'd buy me a Bible quick, fast, and in a hurry, and just reading and reading. And I'm thinking I'm just reading it because I'm reading. No, you're getting ready to teach it. You're getting ready to break this stuff down. God, I don't know how to break. I was terrified. But all of a sudden, I was opening up my mouth, breaking down scripture. Now, I went to Bible college, but, uh, you know, hey, I had two. Two, I didn't even get my certificate. Um, years ago, I had two classes left and never finished them. And then when I went to take homiletics, he said, no. I said, I got two classes left. I can take homiletics, God. And, and no, he didn't want nobody changing the way that I present when I, when I get out and do what I do. He wanted me to be like that. He didn't want me to be changed. Oh, this is what you do it and, and all of that. Mm-mm. Because when I could have be deep in a message, and when God said, go down there and pray for her, he put that person in my eyes. I don't know what I'm doing. I, my little feet started going down the steps and walking over to the person. And next thing I know, I'm saying, how you doing? And everything, they saying, how you doing? And next thing you know, I'm saying something to them, and they on the floor. Come on. God, a, a God thing, you know. I don't understand all this stuff about when you prophesy and you know all this stuff and you go into the grocery store tomorrow and all of that stuff. Uh-uh, uh-uh. No, 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 no. It's supposed to come out of your mouth, whatever God says. You don't talk to impress people. Everybody's trying to impress. Uh, I don't try to impress nobody. I just try to do what Jesus tells me to do. So what has he done? He's taken me from that journey, loving him, being in Sunday school since I first got the second week event. Uh, uh, Lady Johnson was on me. Baby, I want you in Sunday school. I was like, Lord, I just got here. So I've been in Sunday school ever since I got saved. Mm -hmm. loving Sunday school, loving the word of God in Bible class. And it just pushed me from level to level to level. I was pushed for my purpose. The purpose of out here, it's all about soul. The whole life being pushed for everybody. Pushed to where I am right now. And where I am right now, what I'm asking God for is to take the gifts that are within and, and, and bring them up a little high. Take that gift of healing, and let me just be able to pray for people over the phone and they get healed. And they've been doing that for years. But I want it to go to another level. Mm -hmm. I want everybody to come on the phone to get prayer, to get hit. I said, God, you heal people everywhere you went. Come on. Everywhere he went, they were healed. So if we're supposed to do his works and even greater works, where is it? Where's the greater? So pray for the work. Pray that he does. And so that's where I'm at now. I want the ministry for the young people. I want I want all of these things. I want to be out there uh, uh, back on Facebook because I got so sick with arthritis till I had to get off. That's why I haven't been out there. I didn't feel like getting up early in the morning, putting no clothes on and doing all this. I was in too much pain. I'm feeling better. So I want to go out there and talk the real deal. And that's the love of Jesus, period. Come unto him, all you labor. Laban and heaven laden, and I'll give you rest. He's the one to give you rest. And, and, and if I could, he won't permit me to talk about nobody uh, personally, because I, I got one that I would go after, because he was doing such a good job of breaking down the word and keeping telling it like it is. And then he got out here and started talking about people and joining on people and talking. God didn't call us to that. He called us to love. This is my commandment that you love one another, that your joy may be full. He didn't call us to that. So my story is a story of obedience. My story is thinking you're going one way and you're going another way. Being in love and having your own plan and submitting yourself <clears throat> and letting God have the plan. Taking all of your finances from you and, 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 and putting you out there with no money. I, I wore stockings uh, for six months and I called them my Shekinah Glory stockings because I didn't get no more until it was time to go to the convention. 
Come on, somebody. And them stockings had to last me. I was washing them, hanging them up, washing them, hanging up, washing them, hanging. Come on now, glory to God. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Learn how to suffer. He had to, you know, we think we so humble. I thought I was a nice person until I till he made me pour it and pour. And I was like, I ain't a nice person. I ain't a this. You you really, really become <laughs> humble when you don't have humble. And one time I had 50 cents. Yeah. Mute the phone, please. Mute your phone. I had 50 cents in my purse and was going to church and I was just looking for a little blue jean skirt or something to put on. And God said, put that suit on right there. Oh, I said, oh. Put that hat on. I had a hat to match that suit and the purse. Uh -huh. He said, now you go on uh, 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 and, and go to church. I said, I don't have but 50 cents in my pocket. It ain't about no money. It's all about me. And I sure went and held my head up high. I had to do that Sunday after Sunday because, you know, they was laughing at me. They was talking all about me because I had left my church. God had sent me over to this other church that specialized in casting out demons for five years. I had to train up under them. They were a different kind of church. My church was the sophisticated church of administration. Mm -hmm. A to Z, how to set things up in all the vault for casting out demons. I had to go over there to another church where they specialized in that. And then I came back and they were looking at me funny. I didn't have my big time job anymore. You know, I had to, I had to learn just to be on. I wasn't no Miss Big Shake them up and get everybody tickets to this and make sure all the kids had Christmas stuff and all the little goody goody things that they act like I was Miss United Way. Mm -hmm. But I came back and all I knew was Jesus is the way. A humbling experience. So he did all of that, put me onto the road where I am now. So my purpose is telling the world about Jesus. And he gave me a platform to do that. And if anybody invite me anywhere, I just go. But if I'm not invited, I stay home. I don't try to hang with the good, good club or the big club or, or hang with anybody. You catch me right there with partners in prayer. Or you call me in my home and you catch me on the land ministry. And now, I, I, after 23 years, I, got, I stopped ministering every day. I, I, I let the, the ministers, they do Tuesdays and Thursdays. I told them, I'm tired. You all have enough and you all, you do it. You walk through it uh, on, on every day. And they love doing that. Just like they love Sunday school. Ooh. Partners in prayer know they love some Sunday school. I have a nice crowd on Sundays for Sunday school. And I love it. So I sit back and listen and don't say anything because they just have such a good time. And from that place of not wanting to be, wanting to be something else to this place now of loving the ministry loving it and as far as money is concerned he's he supplies all my needs i just watch him do he uh if, if i had to compare what i make he taking better care of me than when i was working he got me put me oh i didn't tell you he put me back in my house all right. uh the man bought it for 13 he took it out the ridge for thirteen thousand, and uh because it was 1290 something uh 12,993 or something that he paid to get it out of arrears. He gave it back to me. Seven years. He said, he said, I'm tired. He said, I don't want no more. I'm giving you your house back. Told me, just change the lock, go in there, break the locks, and just go on in it. And he just wanted that escrow. He was about six hundred dollars worth of escrow. Gave it back to me. And and they, I'm like, huh? I'm not gonna pay the note. We God told one of my members, call her and tell her about that hope program that Obama had. And you call and they, they break your note in half. Well, that was way back then when Obama was in office. Now that note is just as high as it was when I first moved here. But he, he, he paid every month. And he showed me something. He paid the month before. Mm. So my 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 house note for this month is 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 already paid. I'll be paying on the next month. Uh, next week, I'll be paying for the house note for May. That's just how good he is. That's, I, see, he won't call you and me into nothing that he don't back us up. And see, we have to learn. We have to say, is this God? Is this me? But you're going to be sure, baby. When God get a hold of you and call you and you out there in Operation Desert Storm, you're going to know it's Jesus because mm -hmm. he's going to give you a peace that surpasses all understanding. 
Yes, he will. I had four jobs and I wasn't making that money. The the people that was giving me money was giving me more than the money I was making. And it wasn't that they weren't giving me that much. And I said, oh, my goodness, this is ridiculous. Why am I out here working four jobs? So he let me have a stroke at the convention. Mm. Hello, New Orleans. Had it sitting up there, had a stroke right in the room. Didn't go to on a Friday. On a Friday or Saturday night, didn't go to the hospital until yeah, Tuesday morning. I was at church Sunday, church and all day. Sunday school, service <laughs> after that, the afternoon service, and the night service. Just praising the Lord. And my tongue sound retarded, but mm. I was praising the Lord. Uh-huh. You think I tried to work a job when I got back? I never worked a job since then. Mm -hmm. That was my job. He was getting my attention. Now, now, now go back to another job if you want to. Keep your mind focused on God. Mm -hmm. In this, in this where we're pushing to our purpose, we got to be pushed to his purpose, not your purpose. You got to be pushed to what he wants you to do. And when you do that, it's just wonderful. And he tells me everything I do on my knees. He told me 24 hour prayer on my knees. He told me walk through the Bible on my knees. Real talk. He told me real talk with Evangelist Parker. I said, huh? Uh huh. That was back in 2010. Everybody talking about real talk, your talk, and that. Baby, that was in uh, uh, 2010 when he told me to get out there and do real talk. And then he told me woman to woman. I was like, great God Almighty. So I was out there doing woman to woman too. And when we got out on Facebook doing it, the men were out there before the women. I said, Lord, look at all these men out here. They wanted to hear what's up with us. And we had a ball out there. And uh, I'll be back. But God has to give you strength to be out, back out there. Because that was hard. I'm telling you, getting up in the morning, getting out there. Uh, you know, I was out there four days a week, putting on them clothes and getting up and doing this one. I was so used to just doing ministry on the telephone. Nobody seen me. <laughs> it was something else. But I thank you all for inviting me. And uh, okay. I'll open it up right now, whatever you want me to do. But well, I we're think going I to open it up for dialogue. And this has been really just awesome in what you have been sharing so far. I know it's really increasing somebody's faith where the Lord has told them to go out and, and be obedient and do the work regardless of the cost. And regardless of the sacrifice, we must be obedient to God. Uh, and it's really amazing, like you were saying, uh, in 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 you know in the church without walls. And I remember in one of your uh, interviews that you had given with somebody in the past that how people were not necessarily saying that it was a church. How can you call it a church when you wouldn't actually with within the temple or our facility? Yeah. And how they kind of, you know, railed you on that. Could you talk to that just yeah. for a second? Oh, yeah. They talked about me um, when I left. And they said, how can she have a church? And they on the telephone. Well, how, how she baptizing. And, and yang, 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 yang. And when Bishop Jones, Larry Jones, was went to them to tell them that, you know, he wanted to let me in and recommend me. Uh, they didn't want it. But uh, Bishop uh, um, uh, Larry Lawrence, uh, Bishop Lawrence, Brown, he spoke up for me and, and a couple of other people. He said, well, go out there on her website. You should see her website. It's awesome. She out there, she doing the work. See, they, they didn't understand. All the people that were on that I was ministering to, most of those people were in their own churches. I didn't understand it. They could get baptized, and if anybody wanted to be baptized, and, and, and they didn't have a church home, you know, we the Pentecostal of the world. We can call any city. Me and Evangelist Green or whatever we can call, we can call a PAW, whatever we had to do. We did it. Mm -hmm. And so it was no problem. So yeah, they were talking about me, laughing at me. Church, she got a church. She got a church, y'all on the phone. But when COVID hit. I know. You That's got, the thing. That's the thing. <laughs> and Bishop was so tickled. Bishop, uh, he said, anybody got any questions for Pastor Parker? You know, she's been doing this for a long time. It was so quiet on the phone. Oh you could hear God. it drop. I know, I know. They didn't say a word because they had talked about me and laughed at me. Mm, mm, mm. See, see, God is good. But he gave me the strength and the tenacity to take it. I didn't yes. care what they said about me because I knew that God had put me there. Yes. I wouldn't have left my job for nobody. I had a good job, mm -hmm. a wonderful job. And um, so I wasn't trying to do that of myself. You mm -hmm. got to know 
that you know that you know that God called you to something. Sure. And when you know that you know that you know, you don't care what people say about you. You better get some thick skin. I know. <laughs> I, I had to have thick skin because they were laughing at me. And I would see them and go, praise the Lord. <laughs> I didn't care what they said about me. But I tell you, I can tell you the truth. I did a lot of laughing. When COVID came and everybody mm -hmm. was trying to figure out what they was going to do, I was like, mm. She was already doing it. <laughs> mm -hmm. I was all. Oh. We, we, didn't, we didn't miss a beat because, mm -hmm. you know, that's what we were doing. We didn't have to say, well, what are we going to do here? What we, how are we going to do this? Because we were already doing it. So did you have to train anybody? Did you have to train any any of the other churches or anybody? No, uh, they didn't ask me for any help. In reference no, to doing ministry online. Yeah, They didn't ask me. Now, other people uh, that weren't in my area, I had a few calls. Mm -hmm. I had a few calls from other people but not people here in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, nobody in St. Louis called me, but I got a few phone calls. And you know how we we dis, we don't include young people in the things that we do. I love young people. Yes. That's why I wanted young people's uh, branch and partners in prayer. But um, the churches had to start using the young people because, you know, the young people knew about technology. They didn't know how to get on a conference call, do a web or a streamline. Or, or virtual, they didn't know anything about that. So the young people had to come in and help all the churches. Mm -hmm. Now the young people could get a voice in there and find uh, themselves doing something instead of feeling like they're nothing, you know? So I just thought that that was very, very interesting mm -hmm. uh, that that happened. But um, they were looking at me different. What, what that song say, how you like me now? How you mm -hmm. like me now? <laughs> mm -hmm. But we're gonna so open you don't the have floor to for dialogue. Yourself. And uh -huh. anybody has any questions or comments, we're gonna open the floor for dialogue. Really appreciate all those from Partners in Prayer that are on here tonight. God yeah. bless all of you all. And we're gonna open the floor for dialogue and for comments at this time. Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord, Lord. Vance Burkle. I give honor to the Lord and Christ fits the park and everyone in their respective places. I just want to say, I came on one day, I was in, couldn't walk, couldn't do anything for myself at home attendance. And I, and Elder Reginald introduced me to the number for Sunday school. And I got on and I was enjoying it. I said, well, I'm only coming for this week because I'm going to be soon going back to church. He said, all right. And we went on and one, one time she was t telling us, Wake up, I'm gonna get up out of that bed. It's time, my brother. Get up out of that bed. And I couldn't get up out of the bed because I wasn't able to walk. My I had lymphedema so bad, my legs was like elephants. And so she kept saying, Get up out of that bed. So I started sliding to the edge and putting my foot on the floor and jingling it and tingling it and tingling it. And I still was on the line. And I got where they sent a therapist and I started being able to get up. And she preached a message one day. It ain't for your breaking, it's for your making. And every Shama Debosha, ever since that wonderful day, my we, that's a cliche, but this is not cliche. My soul's been satisfied. Whenever I'm doing something, I ain't got no business. I ain't gonna talk to him. I'm gonna get off right now. I get to talking and get to praising God, and I didn't, and I just got where now I've been taught. And she said, "You ain't got to be down and all that." She told us, "Enjoy yourself, forgive yourself." When you come, I come out of drugs and all that stuff, so I I know He forgave me, but I wasn't letting some of that go. But by being with this minister, I learned that you have to forgive yourself. And it taught me, when, and she said so one day, and I'm going to tell her, she said, you know, the devil came and was trying to tell me to do this and do that. He said, I told that devil, hello, you ain't talking to me. Who you think you talking to? So I tried that. And I'm going to tell you, it worked. And I thank God, because I'm in the hospital right now. Bless you. But God. But God. But God. And she been pray she prayed the other day. Now she didn't know this. I didn't know this. I'm on dialysis, and I they, they tried to get blood, and and she I didn't know it was gonna be where I wasn't gonna be able to get it. And she said, I'm praying for Berkeley, 
and you know they got to get that blood going. And I, she didn't know my blood wasn't going. Let, let me shut up because I can go on. God bless you all. I love you much. Thank love you for you that too, awesome testimony. Oh my God. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Definitely gonna be praying for Evangelist Berkeley. Amen. Yes, he's done Amen. some wonderful Amen. things for her. You know, thank Amen. you for the sacrifice. Any other Amen. questions or comments? Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. I came late, but uh I'm your friend on Facebook, Pastor Angela, and I uh I have seen you, but I was like, you know, I had so many friends, so I, I didn't know you was apostolic. <laughs> <laughs> but now I do. I can stop and listen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I think God is up to something, saints. He is connecting his women together. I mm -hmm. promise you that. I have a sister. Uh, I invited here tonight, Sister Stephanie Roberts, and yeah. the Lord connected us. I was helping her to go through a chaplain course, and God blessed me to get in it too, huh? Come on. It's something about helping somebody in this sisterhood. Sisterhood, Lord, make us one. I, I'm so grateful for this platform. Evangelist Morrison, I appreciate you. Appreciate the women of God. God bless you. Amen. 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 God bless you too and happy birthday to you. <laughs> Thank you. Happy birthday. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Can you Appreciate mute me again? Because okay, I will. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? <laughs> Thank you. Who else? I see so many partners in prayer. Benita, I see uh Vans Benita Kowalski. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Mother Hicks, and I see Tony T. Tony T has just been watching mm -hmm. and smiling. <laughs> He's got a beautiful smile. He got a beautiful yeah. smile, sister. That's Minister Antoinette Taylor. You know, she's oh. in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Uh, Serving Bishop uh, Blissett is her pastor. Well, all I know is that that smile that she has is something yeah, else. She can melt is. the heart of people. She can sit up in, in the hospitals and stuff and just sit up and look at people with that smile and they will feel better. Mm -hmm. Beautiful smile, my sister. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Amen. Any other questions or comments? Praise the Lord. This is Sister Hicks. I was just listening to everything and it was um, it, the message was very encouraging. It was very blessed. I was just listening and taking everything in. So I said, thank you for that message, Pastor Parker. It was very good. Thank you, Mother Hicks. Thank you. Thank you, Mother Hicks. Thank you. More You're welcome. In the thank you. Love you, Mother. Amen. You. I know Thanks there was the Lord, something everybody. that you did. Oh, someone speak. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. That's Mary Jackson, I thought. Praise the Lord. It no, it's not, but I will say something. <laughs> no, go ahead. It, because, the yellow thing just flew, it lit up. I thought it was you. Yes, ma'am. That's all right. Praise the Lord, everyone. I'm just happy to be here tonight and hear your, your witness and your testimony and everything. But as you know, if you don't know, I came on this line 11, 12 years now. I came on because I fell down my flight of stairs in the house and I broke my leg. I mo broke it, did something to it. Well, anyways, I had to have a knee replacement and I couldn't go to church and I really missed the fellowship. And at that time, I think it was the COVID and everything was going on. And I remember Evangelist Kate telling me, you want to hear somebody? And I said, she, she said, you can go to church. She said, she said, it's the church without walls. You know, I said, oh, I, I don't know. I don't want to sit and listen. But that's how I was introduced to Pastor Parker. And I have no regrets. And I thank God because when I couldn't get out to church, Church came to me. God brought it to me. And I thank God for you that you are just a, a, a pastor that just just lived. Which, when you spoke, I know you lived it and you testified of it all the time. And I thank God for you and how he has blessed you and brought you thus far and all that you went through to get where you're at today. And I pray that God will continue to bless you. But I thank God that he brought me into this ministry I'm mean, here, and I, I just, I have been blessed. I've learned more, and I've gone higher in Christ, and I just thank God for all things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You got, you got, you got a lot of evangelists too, don't you? Excuse uh, me, ma'am. Sister Morrison. Uh, on the line. Huh? 
Uh huh. Yes. Uh huh. We do have a lot of advantages. I, I know. I've, I've, I was just uh, seeing one. She, uh -huh. she went somewhere. Oh, there she is. And reverends, Patricia. missionaries, missionaries, teachers, superintendents. Cook. All right. <laughs> Administrators. A lot of people. I'm seeing come, some power up in here. this I'm line. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Amen. I'm seeing some power on this line. And I, I like Lady being Smith, around people. Did, but did you have your, was you trying to say something, Lady Yeah, Smith? I had a question. Praise the Lord, Pastor Parker. I've enjoyed you. I really have. Yes, and I, my question is, when God tell you, to, tell you to tell someone something, even I don't care if they're out of state or whatever, I have a problem. Is, is it right now, Lord? Or is it my timing? Like, I, I'm like, a procrastinating I said well should I tell him now I just don't know when to tell him I know I'm supposed to tell him and I'm going to tell him but my problem is when oh when when God tells me something I do it right then right then when if you mm -hmm. can't get in contact with them then I'm thinking well, in my you, head well well you you got to try nothing beats a failure but a try you keep <laughs> on till you get them because mm -hmm. yes. yes. if he tell you to do it he he, he gonna make sure it, get, it happens because that's okay. the way he is Amen. And I did want to say, I like when you said your vocal, your vocals use your, you thought your vocals was for singing, but it was for something else. Yes. And when you said that, that just jumped in my spirit right there. I know I had surgery and my voice, my singing voice is not back, but I love to sing. But mm -hmm. the Lord is showing me that he wanted to use my voice for something else. So I thank you for the confirmation. Oh yes, ma'am. Go on and use it for that for that what he wants you to use it for. He, then he'll give you the back to sing. But okay. he wants to make sure that you spread that gospel. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. That's what he that's what he wants you to do. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Uh-huh. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I thank God. Uh so Praise Stephanie the Lord. Roberts wanted to say something real quick. I don't know if she's still able to she somebody said, said praise the Lord. Yes, praise the Lord, Pastor. This is Sister Praise Gigi. the Lord, service is beautiful. Oh, it's two people. Go ahead. Yeah, it was Sister Roberts. Oh, really quickly, I just want to say, praise the Lord. Thank you for so much for having the service. And thank you for being so candid. I really appreciate it. God bless you. Have a great night. I got to go to school tonight. But I thank you for what I've heard. Great, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, thank, thank you, you dear. Thank you. The other person was Sister Gigi. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the, Praise the Lord, past and everybody in their respectable places. I truly uh, appreciate Pastor Parker. She is truly a woman after God's own heart. I've been on this line now for about 20 years and have joined Partners in Prayer in 2019 uh, full time. But I can remember when I came on this line, sometimes when she opens up her mouth, people doesn't they don't always, you know, believe things. But I remember when God brought me in this line, she dug into me the first day I was on here. And I called up a woman down the Cape. I said, I want her number because I don't know who she thinks she is. And I called her and she dug into me again. And I'm going to fast forward this story. And one day I was on the line again and she dug into me. I said to my daughter, I'm going to fix her. She thinks she's talking to me. I says, when the line is over, just hang up the phone. I got my coat on. I got my, my bag in my hand. I shut the light off and put my hand on the door. And she said, Gigi, come back here. Where do you think you're going? Get back here. Get back here now. And I'm looking around like, Lord, I'm in Massachusetts. I know she don't see me because there ain't no cameras <laughs> in my house. But I had to drop my bag. I said, this is what I said. I said, I ain't stunning her. I'm going to I I'm going to work. And God says, no, you're not. And I had to drop my bag, turn my light on, and come back around my bed and sit there. And I just sat there, just tapping my feet. And God said, you're going to tell her. I said, I'm going to tell her now. I'm not, I'm not telling her nothing. But I had to tell her. Because, and then that's not the first time. And then she told somebody, she says, tell Gigi, God, God's going to get it. She better do what she's supposed to do. It wasn't even 24 hours later, saints, that I broke my ankle. I was mm -hmm. laid up for almost a year. But that's what straightened me up. That's what did it. When I couldn't do for myself. When I couldn't yeah. even wipe myself. 
when I couldn't dress myself. You got to go through something in order for God sometimes to put you where you need to be. And I just want to thank God for Pastor Parker because, and God, because if she gave up on me, there's, I don't know where I would be, but I just want to let you know in this open platform, Pastor Parker, I appreciate you and I love you. And I thank God for you always following the leading of the Lord. Even my children love her. My children, my grandchildren, one day we were at a function and my grandson went into, um, we were in somebody's house and he just wanted some prayer and they scooted him along like, not now, not now. And he stood up and he says, but it's back straight. You don't have to pray for me. My auntie Angie will pray for me. I, and they looked at like, who's Angie? Who is, who is his auntie Angie person? But he got in the hallway and called her and she immediately prayed for him, immediately prayed for him. And that is a good thing when young people can know and remember that somebody's always on their side. I just want to thank God for you and for this open platform and for the invitation to be here. May God continually richly bless you, Pastor Parker. I love you in Jesus' name. Love you too. That's wonderful. And she was a different kind of person, I'm telling you. <laughs> She said, and may say, oh, she talked to her like that. But she was something else. <laughs> but she's just as sweet now. Everything I asked mm -hmm. to do, I'm doing it now. I'm doing mm -hmm. it now. <laughs> and it wasn't, she was a rough end. Ooh, wee. <laughs> but God. But God, he knows how to but help God. us, I tell you. Yes. I yes, think Lord. we had uh, Sister Muirhead, and then uh, we'll take one more after her, and then we'll get ready to close out. Sister Muirhead. Praise the Lord. I enjoyed you tonight, uh, Fanchelis Parker, Mother Parker. But anyway, how can how can I listen to your um, broadcast or whatever you? How can, uh, uh, you just we just call in. Um, we're on on Sundays. We're at six o'clock. <laughs> so Sundays you could just uh, if you don't want to get up that early, you can just dial the the tape recorded message at your convenience. Uh, but on uh, Monday. Through Friday, we're on the line from 10 to 12. We have that in there. So we have a lot of seniors in our, in our line. And that number is 667-770-1111. Um, That's again, 667-770-1484. And the access code is 136508. So that's six six seven 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 zero one four eight four, code one three six five zero eight, and that's Monday yes. through Friday. That's Monday through Friday and Sunday morning, early in the morning. That's the six o'clock uh, uh, Central Time. Monday the seven o'clock time, where all the New Yorkers, mostly East Coast, is on Sunday morning. Uh, it's seven o'clock in the a.m. for them. So and Monday through have... Friday, ten to twelve, ten a.m. to mm -hmm. twelve o'clock. And yes, then Sundays. Six six Central Time, seven six. Eastern Time. AM Central Time. Uh -huh. Same number. And uh then the uh the other number, the call in number, GG, uh may uh have to give that one out because that's the one I don't keep around with me, and I know I should for when I have uh questions like this. But GG That's the call in number. The prayer is it is it your personal? I'm sorry, what did you ask me for, Pastor? I'm sorry. Uh, could you get that 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 dial back number, you know, for the okay. recording? Yes, ma'am. Doing it now. Okay. And what did you say, Evangelist Morris? Uh, I would just let her uh, put, I did put the information in the chat. I put okay. the number in the chat, the 667-770-1484. And for those that's on the phone that are listening in, code yeah. 136508. And that's Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 12 o'clock p.m. And that is Central Standard Time? Yes, it's 136508. 136508, okay. Here's the code, yes. And, and the, and the um, playback is 667-770-1312. Again, 667-770-1312. I will also put that in the chat. All right. 
Thank you. I'll, I'll also send this uh, in the replay. That this information will be in the replay. So those All that right. uh, receive the notifications, you get this information as well. Uh, I do want to break here and say we thank everyone for being here tonight and being on the line. All those from Partners in Prayer coming in uh, to support um, Pastor Parker. And we just thank the Lord for all that the Lord is doing in and through Partners in Prayer. Thank you for your obedience, Pastor Parker. And I know the world uh, really thanks you because it is global. And so we just thank you for your obedience. For those that this is your first time being on This Is My Story, we're here every Monday night at seven o'clock Central Standard Time, uh, other than holidays, we're not on here on holidays. And so if you're interested in uh, wanting to be a part of our notification list where you will know that we're on, online, you will receive a notification usually that same day. Uh, and um, it's, uh, you wanna put your name and your email address in the chat, and I will add you to our notification list. Put your name and your email address in the chat, and I will add you to the notification list. Uh, also, uh, once you receive the replay, please, um, it'll be connected to my YouTube channel. Please, when you go to my YouTube channel, please hit like, share, and subscribe. And so you'll get notifications that way as well. We do have a lot of different things that we do upload to my YouTube channel. It's our Sunday school. We have a virtual Sunday school on Thursday nights. Our superintendent is Dr. Patricia Crook. You see her <laughs> down here. And we're on Thursday nights, and we just thank thankful for that. Uh, of course, we do have a prayer line on Tuesday nights. It's the Great Christ Temple prayer line from 6.30 to 7 o'clock. And those oh. are usually things that are uploaded to my YouTube channel, as well as this is my story segment. So you can always go on there, just look my name up, Katherine Morrison, and you can see all the different uh, uh, videos that we have uploaded of services, platforms, and different things, as well as my music is on there as well. So we just thank you. Thanks, uh, Lord. Thank the Lord again for allowing y'all to be on here and be a part of This Is My Story. And we're going to yeah. ask uh, Pastor Partner Parker. I'm not even talking well. <laughs> I'm getting tired. <laughs> well, right. Pastor Parker, we're asking that you will give us final remarks and then close us out in prayer. Amen. I, I, I'm saying again, I'm just, I see Sister Dunlap on here. I'm just Amen. praising the Lord. Yeah. I'm, I'm praising the Lord for Evangelist Dunlap. You know, she's P-A-W. Big time, uh, you know, with that, what, what do you call that uh, when they study the word? Uh, Bible bowl. Bible bowl. bowl. Yeah, this is, she's a big shot in Bible bowl when I met mm -hmm. her. And she's a part of the ministry now and has been for so many years. Thank and really, Lord that's how I was connected to you. That's what I was going to say a little while. That's how I was connected with you, the partners in prayer, as well as the uh, the CEOs through uh, Evangelist Carolyn Dunlap. She was oh. really trying to inspire us to be a part of CEOs at the convention. Yeah. And uh, I'm just, just blessed to be a part of that. But it was all through Evangelist Carolyn Dunlap. And I think, well, and really, matter of fact, this platform, it has a lot to do with her inspiration, inspiring me to be, uh, to do this platform. So I just thank the Lord for her, the powerful, Amen. powerhouse woman of God. <laughs> Amen. I love her. I love her. Amen. You know, we're getting ready right now for the convention. We're trying to get everybody um, together. And she helps me a lot sometimes because you, you're doing so much. And she's so busy. She finds time to help me even in the ministry. She schedules all our preachers. Mm -hmm. Our Sunday scheduled preachers mm -hmm. that she does that. So if anybody ever want to preach partners in prayer, they see Sister Carla Dunlap and she comes back to me. Mm -hmm. Father, we thank you so much for tonight, this opportunity to be with you. We give you glory and honor and praise because it's such a privilege to be here. It was such an honor to meet all these wonderful, beautiful women of God, just the ones that I'm seeing their faces, and I, I just see wonderful things about them. I just thank you for the people for this ministry, and I pray this won't be the last time that I will have some type of association with these women because they're beautiful and wonderful. And we thank you, Lord, for this blessed fellowship. And we thank you for the work that Sister Morris, Evangelist Morris, is doing. And we pray that it will be so many wonderful things that come out of this union that she has in fellowship with all of these wonderful women. 
women of God. We pray, Lord, that you would look down on your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We pray that the trouble that the country is in, you see all of the wars, you see Israel and, and, and Hamas, you see Russia and Ukraine, you see all of the things that's going on in, 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 in Iran and all of the horrible things. You see Haiti, Lord, and the police and all of those people, they, they need some order in Haiti. There is so much, and you see our individual cities to where we're suffering. Now, we pray, God, that we would have uh, murderers and robbers and traffickers, human traffickers, that they would go into retirement. We pray, God, that you would give them a mind and go into their conscience now so they will no longer want to do what they do anymore. That repentance, Lord, would just spread all over the earth like AIDS. Let it spread like COVID, a mind to repent and change. In the name of Jesus. Now we ask you to let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer, creating us a clean heart, renewing us a right spirit. And we're going to forever praise you. We're going to forever glorify you and testify of your name without end. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. 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 Come on, let's give the Lord a hand praise for what we've heard tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you. Amen. 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 I thank Amen. God for those faithful people. Yes. And I thank God for all the new people I see. I hope I remember your face when I get to the convention. <laughs> Amen. If not, if you remember me, just say something. I, you know, I'm getting old now. <laughs> we can't remember like we used to. Good job. Good Amen. Job. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Enjoyed it. Enjoy Appreciate it. it. Good Love day. Bless you. Bye now. Good night. You have a wonderful night in Jesus. I love Plus, you we'll too, love baby. Love you. Love next you, week on This Is My Story. You, uh, I think I remember telling I you all you, about uh, that mm. uh, next Gosh. week we are going to be sending out. So be watching your emails. I will be sending out that um, spiritual gifts assessment for you mm. all to be looking over and to really actually yeah. go ahead and take that spiritual gifts assessment. Uh, send that out next week. So then the week after that, Dr. Glenda Dunlap will come on and she'll be uh, facilitating that particular segment about spiritual gifts, okay? That's good. That's a good, that, right. I like that. Amen. That'll be good. God Amen. bless y'all. Love y'all. Y'all have a wonderful night in Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Love you. Have a good night. Thank you all. Thank you. God bless you all. Bless you. Bless you good too. night. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye, Davina. That's my sweet pie. Amen.